Why do studios hate Blender? I mean, if you look at the most used 3D software, Blender is by far the most popular. So what is it about it that they don't like? I've been using Blender for three years and it's fast, intuitive, it's got tons of support and add-ons that improve its functionality. So why choose to spend thousands of dollars on other programs when Blender is so good? Do studios know something about these other programs that the average 3D artist doesn't? Well, the surface level answer to this question is really obvious. But if we truly want to understand why studios choose to ignore Blender, we need to dig a little bit deeper. So Blender was first released in 1994, but that was not the Blender that we all know. The open source Blender that everyone uses today was released in 2002. There was a whole ownership battle between the creator and the investors who wanted to keep Blender paid, but eventually the creator won and Blender was made open source. However, when it was released to the public, it was already outclassed by other programs like Maya or 3ds Max, that were already being used by professionals. And it was only really in the past few years that Blender has become viable for professional work. That means that during the 2000s, when CGI became cheaper than practical filmmaking for most projects, Blender wasn't even an option. So from 2002 all the way up to 2019, when Blender 2.8 was released, it really wasn't that viable for professional productions at all. It was slow, had no support, and it was difficult to modify with add-ons because all the major add-on and plugin developers were focusing on plugins for the big four. So what changed? Why is Blender more viable today than it was back then? And why are studios still choosing to ignore it? So first of all, with Blender 2.8 came a new user interface, which is more friendly to new artists. They improved scene updates, which made Blender more responsive. They added Eevee, Blender's real-time render engine. They added Grease Pencil for 2D animators, and they added the collection system that we all know today. So this update was a huge leap forward. But since then, we've seen other massive updates like Cycles X, Light Linking, and Geometry Nodes, just to name a few. So in the last five years, Blender has improved dramatically. And with the improvements to Blender also came new support from the community. A massive wave of Blender users that had just picked up the program by watching YouTube tutorials. All of these improvements left people wondering, why do studios still choose to spend thousands of dollars on other programs when Blender is free? To answer that question, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of a visual effects supervisor. You work at a large visual effects house, let's just say Weta for example, and you spend $180,000 per year to kit out your team of 100 artists with their choice of Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, or Houdini, depending on their role in your team. So let's just say the switching to Blender would save you $180,000 per year. It's a no-brainer, right? Well, not at all. According to ZipRecruiter, the average salary of a visual effects artist working in a studio is $105,900 per year. It's just in the US, but let's just roll with it. So let's assume that each person on your team would take two full months of full-time work to reach the same expert level of proficiency in Blender that they had on their old program. If that were the case, then in just lost time, you would lose $1.765 million dollars, enough to pay for almost 10 years of subscriptions for your whole team. Now, this example makes a whole lot of assumptions, but it just sort of gives you a feel for the sort of considerations that these studios have to make. And this doesn't even factor in the most important detail. Blender is worse. Now, Blender being a jack of all trades program means that on an individual level, it is in some ways better than each of these other programs. But when you have Maya for your animation team, 3ds Max for modeling, Maya for simulations, and so on, your efficiency and quality of work is going to just be better than Blender. I say that as a Blender fan. I use Blender for the vast majority of my work, both for freelance and just for YouTube. But at the highest level of production, it's kind of garbage, especially when you consider that studios spend hundreds of millions of dollars on feature films. So what's an extra 100,000 to get the best in class visual effects software? So those are some obvious considerations and they tell us why Blender is not industry standard right now. 
But the next reason is why Blender will never be industry standard. Also, if you're enjoying the video, you should drop a like, it really helps out. So if you're a studio looking to pick up a Maya subscription for 100 3D artists, you're essentially buying Maya in bulk. You're gonna be spending a ton of money and Autodesk wants to make sure that you're happy so they can keep getting paid. Bulk discounts are everywhere. For instance, I work at a water garden store. If a customer buys an entire roll of pond liner, instead of just a smaller piece, Piece, we give them a 10% discount to try and incentivize that. But we can't really give a much bigger discount than that because at a certain point, we're just going to be losing money. The more liner we sell, the more money it costs us as well. When Autodesk sells a Maya subscription, it isn't selling a physical product that costs it more the more it sells. It doesn't cost them more to have more users. That means that they can discount however much they need to to make the sale. Now, obviously, the public does not have access to the business statements of these large visual effects houses, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if Weta had a deal with Autodesk that says, we'll buy Autodesk for all 1,000 of our employees and we'll do that for the next 10 years, but you have to give us a 50% discount. This is essentially a win-win. Autodesk secures a big client for years to come and Weta saves millions of dollars. Now, while I personally believe that this is going on, it is somewhat conjecture, but the next reason is proven. Large visual effects houses get support. We just talked about why Autodesk would be incentivized to keep Weta happy. They wouldn't want to lose a multi-million dollar account. So if Weta has an issue with 3ds Max, they have access to support from the Autodesk team. Now, Autodesk offers support to all of its users, but there have been many cases of individuals who have reported that Autodesk just completely ignores their complaints. Yet while Autodesk feels like it can lose one user, it definitely doesn't want to give up servicing an entire company. This creates an even bigger divide. While indie studios and individuals get ignored, these larger studios enjoy the support that everyone was advertised. This is why many small indie studios and individuals choose to opt for Blender rather than dropping the cash on expensive suite of programs. So after all of that, why do studios hate Blender? <laughs> They're basically just saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why would we stop using the programs that are working so well and risk switching over to the unknown Blender? That would be a big risk something that large studios in general hate taking. Which is why, even though I love Blender, I don't think it'll become industry standard anytime soon. So Blender is obviously worse for studios who have access to almost infinite resources. I mean, in an interview with Corridor Digital, Kelly Port of Digital Domain, one of the largest visual effects houses said this. So at this point, is there like a full perfect 3D reconstruction of New York like on the servers somewhere at Digital Domain or Disney or something. You would think by now. <laughs> I think I think so. The <clears throat> Ock Reveal sequence on that bridge, Digital Domain did that sequence and it's about four square miles of fully digital environment. So obviously, as solo VFX artists, we are at a huge disadvantage. These large studios have access to thousands or even millions of assets. But there is an add-on inside of Blender that's made a huge difference in bridging this gap, and that's Blender Kit. You've probably already heard of it because they're used by thousands of 3D artists. It'll be the first link in the description, and you can go download it for free to get 13,000 3D models. Or if you want to get their entire library of 38,000 3D models plus 14,000 materials, you can get 10% off using my link in the description and that'll also go to help support this channel. I've been using them for years now and it's awesome, but you do want to be careful that you don't abuse the assets. You're free to do whatever you want, but don't go just plop 10 assets that you just downloaded into a scene and call it your art. But if you use them correctly, these assets will make your workflow way faster and more professional. Anyways, if you made it this far into the video, you should definitely subscribe to see more, or you can just watch this video over here. Thank you for watching.